Okay, so I will present the, the methodology of interviews as a research method in data, culture, and society. Uh, okay, so the first step before even thinking uh, about doing an interview is to get ethical approval. Uh, so you can get it from your institution. Uh, when So you determine if your research is minimal risk or low risk and then you ask for permission. So here are the link uh, you can use for that. Uh, so now I will present what uh, is an interview. So an interview is a qualitative research technique consisting in directly asking questions to an interviewee. So, in order not to make the interviewee uncomfortable, there is most of the time only one social scientist facing them. Uh, so, as you can see in the slide, there are three different types of interviews. Structured interviews, where the social scientist asks all participants the same questions. Semi-structured interviews, so the social scientist has a set of predetermined questions but can add some in order to develop or qu clarify some points. And unstructured interviews. So for this type of interview, there is no question prepared in advance and the interviewee is more informal. The interview is more informal. Okay, so... Um, in social sciences, interviews are used in order to approach the interviewee's experiences and perceptions. Uh, by directly speaking with the interviewee, the social scientist has the opportunity to gain in-depth and detailed information about the participant's subjective experience. Nevertheless, as interviews allow participants to develop their answers, it's sometimes more difficult to compare those. Uh, in addition to that, interviews are more difficult to organize and it takes more time to conduct an interview properly than to give a questionnaire to fill out. Okay, so most of the time in social sciences, uh, interviews are structured or semi-structured ones. So the first step of the methodology of interviews is to construct uh, an interview grid. So an interview grid is a list of questions that the sociologist will ask the interviewee. Okay, so in order to formulate the interview grid, uh, the social scientist has to determine exactly what type of information they want to get. Uh, this is especially important as an interview requires more time than a questionnaire for the same amount of question and as an interview can't be too long. So when the sociologist know, knows exactly which information is important to him or her, there are pitfalls he or she has to avoid when formulating the questions. First, the question should be easy to understand. So this seems easy, but it's sometimes uh, very difficult for special spe specialized researchers to has assess the technical knowledge of the global population. And second, the question should not be orientated, which means that the sociologist has to make sure that the way in which the question is asked does not imply an answer. Uh, then, when the interview grid is ready, it can ideally be tested on some people in order to make sure that all the questions are easy to understand and make sense to the interviewee. If this is not the case, the questions must be modified accordingly. And finally, uh, the interview itself. So, in order to conduct an interview correctly, the social scientist has to adopt a certain posture. Indeed, the interviewee has to feel confident enough to express his true feelings or his opinion. And in order to achieve that, the social scientist should not be judgmental. So even if he strongly disagrees with the opinion of the interviewee, it is very important he does not show that. 
and uh, the social scientist also should seem friendly and encouraging, saying things like thank you, okay, interesting, or I, I understand, or simply nodding. And if the interview is semi-structured, it is also up to the social scientist to decide when to ask one more question or when to encourage the interviewee to develop something. Okay, so when the interviews have been conducted, the social scientist can analyze all the answers. Uh, this can be done by comparing what has been said by different interviewees for the same question, or to analyze the link or contradictions in the different answers of the same interviewee. So most of the time, both should be done. When there are few interviews, the social scientist can do this by himself, uh, just with a pen and a paper. But when there are many interviews, this is not always possible. Uh, so interviews can be transformed in a quantitative material. Uh, and in order to do so, two main methods exist. So first, uh, the answers to different questions can be coded into a limited number of answer types and then analyzed as a quantitative data. Or second, a software of textual analysis uh, such as NVivo uh, can be used. Uh, so NVivo is uh, available to King students, so I will present it briefly. So, um, uh, NVivo can help to identify interesting content or concepts in qualitative material. Uh, it aims at maximizing what we can take out of the collected information. Uh, so NVivo, uh, as I said, is mainly used to analyze qualitative data, but it can also combine qualitative and quantitative information. For example, uh, with NVivo, you can analyze open question and use uh, demographic questions for comparative purposes. Uh, yeah, so I just, uh, to finish, I will just give an example of um, how NVivo works. For, so for example, if uh, in, you, in your interviews you have uh, many interviewees that use the word balance, then uh, um, NVivo can show you that. And then, uh, you can create a node to study this phenomenon, uh, see if every interviewee uses this word, visualize how different persons talk about that. So this is go globally how NVivo works. Uh, so it's the end of the presentation. Thank you.